Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, people often go, hey, Cameron, um, how can a professional keep track of all of their creative digital assets? And I go, well, I'm not qualified for that, but I can tell you what malarkey I do. And then I go uh, head on over to eagle.cool. It's something I've used for about a year now, and it has really, really, really helped me. What I used to do was toss everything into um, weird folder structures that made sense at the time, but then didn't make sense later on. And uh, that was kind of working a little bit until I got to the point where I was doing it for 15 years, and then it was just kind of a little overwhelming. Um, I have not used other digital asset managers, so I can't really do a comparison. But I can tell you as someone that um, was looking for something that seemed fully featured and low cost, this was um, pretty much the only thing I could find. And since I've been using it, I'm, I've been incredibly happy with it. So it's um, pretty low cost. It is $29.95 for uh, a license to install two copies of it. So it's Windows and Mac. You can do two Windows, you can do two Mac, you can do one of each, however your uh, devices work out for you. Um, there is no sort of mobile thing. It's just a local first program. So there is no cloud aspect at all. There is no um, sharing um, you know, built in. You'd have to find some other... Um, some other uh, utility to pair it with if you want to share stuff with uh, people not on your network, not uh, available to you, um, whether that's exporting it out and emailing it or sharing a link off of a drive or Dropbox or whatever. Um, now, you can um, put your Eagle libraries on something that is backed up and um, shared to the cloud and then use whatever native tools are uh, available to that, uh, you know, whatever service you're using. Um, if you want, it really just depends. One of the things that I really like about it is just how easy it is for me to find stuff with minimal effort on my part. So what you can do is you go and make a new library. You get this fresh little thing. We got nothing in here. I actually have a bunch of libraries here that I use. Um, this is a fresh one for here. As you can see, we got some navigational stuff on the left. We got some uh, sorting and filtering stuff on the top. Now, let's say like me, you just went through and um, all of the uh, H.io uh, game bundles that you've purchased over the last few years and went actually went through them. And now you have dozens and dozens of video game assets that uh, you you're like, well, what do I do with them? How do I organize them all? So click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Let's go back to the main one. Click and drag. Look at this. Nice and beautiful. 400%. Let's uh, go more to a... Uh... You know, I also got some uh, music. Let's toss some music in there. In there. It's DLL files, zip files, executables. Let's drag, drag everything in there. Alright, we have dragged and dropped uh, a bunch of random stuff that we have acquired from the internet. Uh, we've got some, uh, you know, we got some sprite sheets. We got some, uh, we got some PDFs. We got it all, right? Alright, now we have uh, haphazardly dragged and dropped thousands upon thousands of assets in here. Um, it's actually about 65 that total. 173 megabytes but we got photoshop files we got meta files i don't know what that is we got uh we got uh png files we got audio files we got pdfs we got exes we got zip files we got dll files we got everything in here right so aside from just dragging and dropping into the main interface to uh, import it like that we can also take a folder don't even know what's going to be in here. Let's just, we're going to take one of these. We're going to drag it over here to the left side. And see a little at the bottom there, it says drag and drop folder here to import. So let's just drop that folder here. And now look what it's got. It's going to import everything in there with the folder structure. 
intact. Boom. So we've got three folders now. It says here only one top level and then two sub folders in that one. Um, we can also, you see, you got the little plus here. We can click that. Let's make a folder. Boom. Typo. Uh, and then you can just drag and drop stuff in there if you want. And then when you um, have an asset highlighted over on the right, we've got the inspector. And then you can see it says folders, new folder. Hmm. So let me drag that same one over here to that tape folder that I imported. And now you can see it's got two on the right side. So those are a couple ways you can import assets there. You can also set up a directory for it to um, monitor. So anything that gets saved to there will get imported. There's also a browser extension so you can um, save stuff directly from websites into your Eagle library. And when you do that, um, over here on the inspector on the right, you can see those little notes thing. So you can type arbitrary notes. There's also a, a URL space that will keep track of where you save those files from if you got them from the internet. As you can see, again, two folders are listed here. So once we've dumped a bunch of stuff in here, how do we find what we need? So Eagle makes it super simple because there is a million built-in tools for finding that. Up here at the very top, we can type in something. Do, 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 do. Tree. Okay, we got anything that matches tree in any of the fields. So it's not just going to be the file name, uh, but notes, uh, even websites, anything like that, it'll find it. So that's super simple right up there. We also have all of these on the top. So we've got color. Let's see if we can find, there we go, look at that. Boom, we can search by color similarities. Let's move this down here. Oh, you can see some popping up in the background. Amazing, right? We can do tags on here. And we can do folders, right? They function the same in the sense that you can have um, one item in multiple folders the same way you can have um, one item with multiple tags. The difference is how they're presented to you. The folders pop up over here, and they have this inherent hierarchical structure. And you can click and drag, move these around um, here. And um, so if you're someone whose brain thinks of folders, like folders first when you're trying to find something or just in terms of navigation on the computer, you default to folders, um, which is no there's nothing wrong with that. People like to uh, rail against that. But if you've been using folders for the last 25, 30 years on every computer device that you've owned, but if you've used laptops and you've used desktop computers your entire life, then yeah, like it's going to be hard for you to break out of that folder mentality. And I think there's many ways where folders make sense versus uh, tags. So, you know, whatever, it's fine. Um, you can use that and you get the same flexibility. Um, and then tags, let's, um, let's click on something and let's make a tag. Boom, we got tag one. Boom, we got tag two. Over here on the left, we can see all of the tags and we can categorize the tags. So let me make a tag group. Group Uno, right? Let's put tag two in there. Let's do another group. Group two. Let's put uh, tag one in there. So let's click on one of these assets. And then right over here where it says new tag, we automatically see the ones that we have here or you can just start typing to add a new tag. And then uh, it also tells you the grouping it's in. So if you have... Um, like tags that represent something like maybe you've got a bunch of assets and some of them are licensed for um, any use by you some of them are licensed for specific projects uh, maybe some of them were commissioned maybe you made some of them uh, you can have all of those tags there and you can you know group them by who made the asset um, what uh, you know license do you have for it anything like that you can group it um, with a project tag if you want you know, whatever makes sense to you. And then down here, we'll also have, uh, when we go to the tags thing in the filter bar at the top, we are going to have those same groupings there. And you can see it there. And then if we check it, it'll just automatically filter it. And then there's also the all tags. And we can filter by shape. Uh, not much exciting going on in uh, this particular library with this random uh, grouping of stuff I've dumped in here. But um, horizontal, vertical, you can rate stuff and have them in here you can actually use this program to organize any type of stuff you can toss video files in here you can save youtube stuff to it um 
which will open up like an embedded player so it won't actually download it. But you, you can do that and you can toss um, uh, tutorials or anything you find on YouTube in here. You can dump PDFs like you've seen, executables, anything at all, any type of file. So um, maybe you use it to store your, um, your, um, like your ebooks and, you know, PDF comic books or software manuals or whatever. You know, you can do that. Or screenshots if you do, um, if you use the browser extensions, you can easily make screenshots of either sections of websites or it'll go through and snap an entire um, website on there. Whatever makes sense to you. Uh, types is obviously going to be file type, date imported into the library, dimensions, duration, file size. Um, does it have a, um, a custom text note that you've added? Does it have a URL attached to it? Tons of ways to um, retrieve those things. Um, you can also, if you, uh, let's for example, right click, we can go open in Explorer and you can copy file path. So you can toss a bunch of assets in here. And then if you're using like a video editor or, um, you know, an image editor where it uses, you know, um, uh, linking versus like actually embedding the stuff, you can just copy the file path or drag and drop it directly into your, um, image editing window and it should work fine just like normal let's go ahead and go open in explorer so this is the example pdf this is the thumbnail that it's generated and then on the left here we can see all of this gobbledygook dot info titled folders um, as i mentioned before it is local first what that means is that anything you put in eagle is just stored on your computer only not uploaded anywhere um, they're all stored into these little ID name things. So everything gets a specific ID unique to it. And then it tosses the asset in there, the actual file, as well as a metadata file. That metadata file holds the tags. It holds uh, the custom text notes, the URLs, what folders it belongs to. Everything like that is just in this one file. If we open up that file, we can see that it is um, just all of those uh, values in there. So um, my, I've got like two main Eagle libraries, one for creative assets that I create and purchase and uh, use for uh, stuff, and then one that's for like reference stuff that I find. Um, I've got thousands and thousands and thousands of stuff saved in there. Um, uh, I think it was at around five or 600 gigabytes of stuff in there. Blazing fast. The only time that there is um, that like Eagle needs to process stuff is when you're importing a ton of files at once. Once a file is imported, it doesn't seem to really bog down the speed of the program, which again, fantastic. Something that you might not get with a cloud-based um, solution. Uh, and again, because these are just sitting here and you can easily find out what folder they're in you can just copy this drag it to another folder drag it to an email drag it to a flash drive give it to someone else um, or whatever uh, you can also of course have this uh, eagle library sitting on an external drive or a nas drive or something like that um, and then you can point if it's on a, a drive that multiple computers have access to you can point Eagle to the same folder, and what will happen is when you update one, Eagle is going to notice it on the other computer. You know, you can also use sync thing if you want to like mirror libraries, and it's lightning fast. Um, you can also another way to get them out of here is if you highlight some, you can right click and you can go export. Bam! And let me do it over here so you can uh, right click export. So export as eagle pack or export to computer export to computer will um, copy all of those files without the metadata and stuff to whatever um, folder you select on your drive an eagle pack is like a um, like a zip type of thing that bundles up all the assets along with the um, id folders and the metadata files that go with them so that you can import them into another version, uh, another install of Eagle, or give them someone else that also uses Eagle, and it'll maintain all of that metadata for them. So yeah, when I um, when I save uh, you know a thumbnail, when I uh, scan a sketch I do, I pretty much 
do very simple, like I, I do um, a descriptive title and then uh, I'll tag it and I might put it in a folder if it's um, related to a specific project. Um, but I gotta tell you, a lot of times um, I'm either in a hurry or I just completely forget and I just, I put it in there and a, um, you know, mildly descriptive title is more than enough to let me be able to find whatever I need. Um, I mean, just the fact that you've got all the colors here, and you can go, oh yeah, it was like, oh yeah, what was that logo I saved that I thought was interesting? It was a green thing. Um, let me just go look at all the green images in here, and I can find it super quick. This is a program that really allows me to not stress over how meticulous I'm being with my file naming, my folder structures, my tags. I use them a lot, but sometimes I don't uh, remember to. Sometimes uh, I, and none of that seems for me to hamper my ability to retrieve stuff, um, especially with the arbitrary notes you can add in there and uh, keeping track of the uh, websites that you store stuff from when you gather reference from online sources. It's, it's fantastic, you know. It's super easy. Let me jump over to my... Uh, 6,000 item, 523 megabyte, uh, gigabyte, gigabyte thingy. All right, let me jump over to my uh, main library. And then you can also use, if you toss fonts in here, um, as you can see, we've got a bunch of fonts here, and some of them have a little green dot, some of them have a little white dot, an un a non-green dot. And uh, that is just, is this font installed on your computer or not? So you can highlight a bunch of stuff, and you can right-click, and it'll say activate or deactivate, and you can, boom, install a bunch of them at once, um, and easily see what is activate, uh, what is you know activated. So um, that alone is very cool, especially you know if you go through and do like the um, save up for the annual you know Blambot font sales or Comic Craft font sales and stuff like that, and you go. You gather up a handful or two every year. That can add up. Um, so, very cool. And again, you can, um, for fonts, when you import them, it'll automatically tag it with, um, like, the weight and um, certain attributes like that automatically. Very handy, very cool. Um, I hope people will check it out. It is uh, 30 bucks, so it's not free, but actively being worked on. Um, there's an API in progress, and um, it's it's super super useful. Oh yeah, smart folders. Um, smart folders are the same as regular folders, except you can have rules. So um, you can very easily see with the folder bar at the top. You can very easily go. Uh, let me see all uh, MP4 files in my vault. But all video files you might not be able to do uh, unless you do a smart, fo smart folder, for example. Um, you can also um, add coloring and icons for the folders. And you can also uh, set an auto tag for folders. So if you ever drag, um, add an asset into a specific folder, it'll automatically add certain tags to it if you want. So uh, there's actually a lot of automation built in as well. That was a quick overview of this uh, very cool app program. Uh, all right, bye.